It is one of the busiest hubs in the city, yet it's under the tightest security reaching the Port of Montreal's terminals requires special clearance. Annie DeMelt was granted access for this Forbidden Montreal. It's late afternoon in the Port of Montreal and there's a tight deadline to meet. 36 hours to load the Montreal Express and not a minute to spare. They can load all the way up to 35, almost 40 containers an hour. Efficiency is the name of the game with more than 2,000 ships transiting through the port every year. And you see the ship coming back every month, coming back every month here to pick up more goods. The port's history has been tied to Montreal's since the beginning, instrumental to the city's development. But when the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway in 1959 allowed ships to bypass Montreal, the port was forced to reinvent itself, moving east, becoming the container hub it is today, making it off limits to outsiders. This is our ride? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. 12 stories higher, we're at the top of one of four giant cranes loading the Montreal Express. They call it walking the plank. All the way to the end of the crane boom. Yet our guide, Daniel Dagenet, doesn't flinch. I used to come here on off, often just to look at the men working also and meditate a bit. You're Does joking, it? right? No, no. And it gets better. People are not yeah. on this while it's moving. Uh, yes. Apparently they are. And a few minutes later, so are we. Before reaching the relative comfort of Claude's cab. The operator's cab is moving from the shore to the water. It's moving on rail and it's trailing with a wire, a power wire, will actually activate the twist locks and release the container on, on the ship. 1.4 million containers transit through the port annually, but they never stay more than 72 hours. All of them are scanned for hazardous materials, some of them even x-rayed. So we're walking into the control center. But this is where security really begins, in the control room, where contact is made with incoming ships. Someone overnight decides to ship 25 cars, and you've never seen that organization before, you have no real address, you know, that's, that's what they do. Also under surveillance, the 5,000 workers here on any given day. We have uh, a network of uh, 350 cameras. Border services carry out random and targeted checks, but only a fraction of the containers are opened. Cracking open is the equivalent of looking for a needle in a haystack, really. One container of counterfeit goods in the, in the thousands of boxes loaded on, sh on a ship you would have to be pretty lucky to find that particular one. Goods coming in by land are watched just as closely. Here you have a truck that comes in and out around every four or five seconds. Drivers give their biometrics. So that's the optical character recognition. So that's the first portal they go in. We have their fingerprints and we take their pictures. And on top of that, agents at the terminals then check each driver's identity and what they're carrying. So we know exactly who we're delivering the box at all times. With $41 billion of goods transiting through here every year, Dejna admits it's always a magnet for criminals, no matter how many safeguards are put in place. We run a tight ship, and no puns intended here. The only way to keep so many moving parks working round the clock in this very forbidden part of Montreal. Annie DeMelt, CTV News.